uh, degree maybe whatever 12 and a1 is of degree of order a to the is minus 10 to the uh, 12 so when you substitute here these large values uh, cancel out but this is not the model that you want uh, because you, the, it resulted in overfitting by finding a good match, but that involve unreasonably large coefficients. So in this case, we do something that is called regularization. Uh, what is the regularization? You form another objective. So instead of uh, minimizing so you want to minimize y of t a right um, instead of that right instead of that we replace it with minimize Uh, y of t a plus a small constant mu times uh, sum of uh, a i squared. Uh, as many i here would be from one from zero to four, right? So in our case here, instead of minimizing this. In these variables, we will add some mu factor times the sum of the squares of the variables. What is the idea? Uh, so instead of minimizing this, we would minimize this plus sum of uh, ai squared i equals from 0 to 4 times some small constant mu. Usually, uh, mu is of the order, say, between 10 to the minus 3 to uh, 10 to the minus 14, uh, depending uh, on particular problem at hand. So what is the idea? Idea is if you minimize this, this term prevents A's from growing too fast, right? Because as A grow, this also grows and it prevents this from picking up noise. In fact, if we have time later in the course, uh, if we do a little bit of signal processing, uh, you will see uh, how uh, this, uh, this works. So do you understand uh, um, so far what we are doing, right? So going back to our problem we solve this first step by minimizing sum over all users are sum over all i's so that r rated movie r uh, rho r i so that's the rating that user r gave to uh, item i minus p uh, r minus bias of the movie squared plus some small constant mu times uh, sum over all users of p r squared plus sum over all movies uh, um, of p i squared. Okay? So this is what we minimize. So what is the upshot of all this? Are you with me? Do you understand uh, this? Uh, right? This method of least squares uh, is ubiquitous uh, and uh, uh, you know, this is how you do fitting uh, 
of a simple model to your data. Um, so we solve this process by using some uh, least square solvers, uh, such as the one that is, for example, provided by MATLAB or Mathematica. You know, nowadays you don't hard code, you don't code numerical methods yourself because they, you have extensive libraries of uh, uh, methods uh, that are, uh, you know, very polished uh, and uh, uh, it's hard to beat them. So usually you just use a software package that uh, implements one of these methods. Okay, so once you remove that, uh, uh, you get, so let's define now uh, as rho ri uh, bar. Uh, let this be equal original rho ri minus, let's call it br minus bi, where br and bi are values of uh, B small r and B i, which uh, minimize uh, uh, the above objective. And so we got a new table of values. And now we would like to, okay, another thing that we could have done, and in fact, for that we challenge, uh, we do it. Uh, you see, you can also subtract the average rating of all movies in the table and have another mean here as it's done in the textbook. So, Alternative, uh, because you want to kind of uh, remove everything uh, as much as possible, but it's really not fundamental for to the method. So let's just keep uh, this slightly simpler uh, form. Okay, so now we got a different table of adjusted values that should be more representative of user preferences, user tastes, right? So we again have a table like this of these tweaked uh, values ri, right? With the removed bias of users and bias of movies. Now you would like to make a recommendation. Because now you can think of these new rows as giving you kind of absolute values, unbiased values of the how of how much a particular user uh, likes a move, and you can do the recommendation in two ways, right? One way of doing it would be you look at all rankings that a particular user has uh, uh, done, right? And then you try to find another user in your table that has large overlap in terms of how many movies he has seen with together among the movies that the first user has seen and who has given similar rankings, then, so here you will have, uh, so this is user R1, this is user R1, R1, and then you have here another user uh, R2, J, uh, R, sorry, uh, row R2, uh, I, R and here a row R to M. So you try to find a user that has given similar 
uh, lightings, so to speak, removed from free from bias, and see among the movies that this guy has seen and liked to recommend it to, the, uh, to this user if he hasn't seen this movie. Do you understand what is the trick? Right, so for you want to make a recommendation uh, for this user. So there are quite a few movies, of course, that he hasn't seen, right? What you do is you try to find in the table, this is just the kind of uh, main idea, another user that whose rankings of what they saw both are the same, then among the movies that he has seen but this guy hasn't seen, you look for the highest ranked one and recommend it to the first user. Right? So the, the idea is find a user with similar taste, see what he liked that the first user hasn't seen and recommend it to the first user. Another way of doing it, another option, would be to go the other way around, right? So, um, so recommendation stage, so second step uh, is uh, uh, similarity. Um, so find uh, user, so one option, A, would be find a user with similar uh, role, uh, role R, say role Rs, and recommend Uh, how many M's in recommend? Two. Um, uh, high ranking, his uh, high ranking movie. That's one way. So you try to find another user with similar taste look for a movie that he has seen and liked that this guy hasn't seen and recommend it. Option B would be to go uh, to find a similar movie to one that uh, user has seen and liked, right? So now you do the other way around. Let's move over here and draw another picture. So you see, this is what, this is, in terms of mathematics, this is not at all a rocket science. It's essentially just very basic calculus. But it, it makes huge amount of money for e-commerce. So these very basic methods, like least squares and various types of correlations are very worth learning. So the other possibility is this. So again, here is your user, and here are the ranks of a few movies that he has seen. Right? What you do now, say among all these, he liked this one the best. Okay, so this is the highest of all rows, right? So now what you can do
right? Uh, is uh, so this is uh, user R, this is uh, movie J. Uh, you can look at all uh, movies, uh, so including movies that this guy hasn't seen, right? And you can define a distance right between the movies uh, so that the users who have seen both uh, movie J and uh, say movie K here, that they similarly like them. So here we were compa comparing rows. We were looking for two users with similar tastes and then using one of them to recommend movies to the other one. Here, instead, we pick a movie that one user has liked and then among all the columns, right, we look at the movies that these columns are as close to each other as possible, which would indicate what does it mean that uh, uh, these numbers are similar, that people who like that movie also like this movie. Yes? Could it be people that didn't like that movie also? Yes, we will come to that. Uh, uh, so we want to have, uh, that's a very good point, and uh, so you want to leverage both liking and disliking, yeah. right? And that's the reason, one of the reasons why we took out the biases, because after you take the biases, uh, these new values can be both positive and negative. Right? Someone can kind of, uh, not, instead of saying that he liked a movie very little, with this new centering, he actually dislikes that movie. So we want to leverage both likings and uh, dislikings. Uh, yes? Um, how do you, how do you put, put it to the minimum? Like, how does the minusing work? Sorry, say How does the minusing work? Uh, so this? Yeah. So, okay, so you, these are known quantities from the table, right? Okay. You find the values of biases of uh, users and biases of movies so that this sum gets as small as possible. Yeah. So these, the squares of these numbers in total will be as small as possible. So these guys by their squares, so some of the squares of these guys will be as small as possible. So you subtract from all the rankings bias of that particular user that was obtained from here and bias of uh, this particular movie also obtained from here. How do you find the bias? So the bias is uh, the solution to this minimization problem. So I am, look, this is a function, these are constants, these are my variables. I find what is the point that this quadratic function, of course this is in a space with as many, is with huge number of dimensions, but we are looking at this point if you, right? If this correspond, if this is the value of this, residual. So here, some of the squares of these guys are, so these guys are chosen so that some of the squares of these guys is as small as possible. Because you took out, you kind of subtracted from the table uh, as much as possible that has a simple explanation, namely bias of the rater and bias of the Right? So
so um, let me see. Is this clear? And what is the part after that, the new... This part? Yeah. Okay, this part is to avoid overfitting. You see, we don't want this to be too large because we don't want to do something called overfitting. We don't, we want to kind of pick up the trend, but not the noise, okay. right? So think about, it's a bit of a black magic, right? This is kind of, uh, you don't want to, you know, to minimize this for the wrong reason. So you want to kind of keep these under control, not to be too large. So once we find this, uh, right, it's these guys that will be used to, uh, because now these guys encode genuinely the liking and disliking of each user. So the question is now the following. Um, how do we do that? How do we, if you have two vectors, uh, say row R1 uh, I, uh, M, so row Y, and row R2, uh, R, yeah. uh, that overlap significantly. So this is the rankings of one user. This is the ranking of another user. And they have, say, they have large overlap, not complete overlap, but uh, say they look like this. So uh, there is significant amount, significant number of movies uh, that they both uh, have seen. Some movies this guy saw, which this guy didn't, and vice versa. So these will be your eyes. This is Raider R1, this is Raider R2. Yes? Is that just the movies that they watch or the difference between their ratings? So this will be, these are, these, uh, they are as ranks assigned by the users, but with removed bias, uh, right? <coughs> so these numbers, it's not just indicating they saw all of these movies, but these uh, uh, rows, uh, so this is row <coughs> R1i, and this is, uh, uh, this is row R2. And now we have to see when we would say that these two users, we have to estimate how similar the users are. How would you do that? What would be a good measurement of estimating how similar the users are? Yes? The distance, but what kind of distance? Um, you see, here is one vector, and uh, here is another vector, here is another vector, and here is another vector. Which vector? Okay, but the length of the vectors can be. Uh, can you use projection? Yes. So which vector among these uh, is uh, the most similar to this vector rho R1? So, yeah. You see, the taste will be similar if this vector point into the same direction. So the measurement of similarity will be the angle between these vectors, right? So how do we find the angle between the two vectors? Uh, we can use the cosine similarity. Which is, uh, 
the scalar product rho r1 times rho r2. But you see, we want to look, say we want to look for a user the most similar to that user, or say this user more sim more similar to that user. For different users, the overlaps which movies they have seen will be different. For some, overlap will be larger than the other. So we want, and of course, if overlap is larger, right, then the scalar product between these two vectors will be larger. But not because they, it won't mean that these vectors are more similar, simply because their norms can be larger. So for that reason, we divide these by norm of rho r1 times norm of rho r2. And if you do that, this value is the cosine of the angle between uh, rho r1 and rho r2, right? So, so this would be then sum of rho r1 i, rho r2 i over all i's such that both r1 and r2 have ranked movie i divided by square root of sum of rho r uh, 1j squared uh, times square root of <coughs> the sum rho r2 uh, say k um, over uh, or say we keep the same index uh, j squared because this will right so if you if you look at this uh, this so you fix this user r1 so that's your fixed vector and then you look for all possible other users well the problem is uh, these vectors don't live uh, in the same space because their coordinates are defined on different sets. So different users can have sets of overlap of different size. So for that reason, we want to remove the norm because the norm will clearly be larger if the overlap, of overlap is larger. And we don't care this much, right? How many more, or we might not care how many movies they saw to get both of them. So you want to remove the impact of size. And that's exactly what this achieves, because you divide by the norms, by the lens of these vectors, and you measure the similarity only by the angle. Why do you do this? Because these two, you see, if the vectors were in the same space. If everyone see, everyone saw all the movies, then you wouldn't have to bother with this. You can take the similarity just to be this dot product, right? <coughs> but because the the uh, supporting overlaps between different users vary, we want to kill to remove this different, this impact of the size of the overlap by measuring only the angles between. So um, this will give you, now notice this can be, so let's call this uh, uh, core for correlation between user R1 and user R2 is this, right? So how would you now do your guess? 
uh, what movie would you recommend to use uh, to your user? Let's see how to do that. Uh, by the way, I will send through email a photocopy in case you don't have the book. Um, I'll photocopy this part. This is all straight from the textbook, so uh, you can read it. And the textbook also gives a few uh, ex numerical examples uh, for you to understand better. Uh, so now, To answer your question, who, uh, you see, this can be both positive and negative because highly, you know, by absolute value, this can be large in two cases. If the vectors almost point to the same direction or if they point almost in opposite directions, because in this case, uh, the absolute value of this will be large, but it will be negative, uh, right? So which now of all of these uh, users do you want to use uh, to do your recommendation? Well, you want to use all the significant ones. You don't want to use just one that is the most similar. Right? Just like what we did in iterative filtering in the previous weeks, uh, you don't want to throw away too many things, right? So here, you will consider for each user R, right? For each user R, you will consider the set of all uh, users uh, RK such that uh, the absolute value of core uh, of core R1, oh, sorry, R uh, RK is uh, large. And uh, of you can choose top, so you would sort all of these. Uh, and pick up all the users that are either extremely similar or totally dissimilar. Are you with me? Right? And how would you now guess the ranking of a movie that R hasn't seen? You will simply do the following. Your ranking First, you will guess this bar ranking uh, for certain movie P that user hasn't seen, but so you will look at the following quantity. You will uh, do sum over uh, all core uh, R R k times uh, rho uh, rk i, uh, sorry, p. So now, uh, divided by sum of all absolute value of core r uh, uh, j, so this is overall case, and this will be, um, let me not mess it up, RK, uh, and then uh, for the movie, which will be the movie, just one second, for the movie P, All right? Uh, and here will be sum over all uh, uh, j, right? Uh, or you can, let's call it uh, j, uh, system. 
right? So this is just to normalize, just like in the iterative filtering. Of course, they no longer sum up to one because this is both positive and negative, right? So the sum, uh, but it's a good way to average, right? So what does this essentially say? So the liking or disliking or of each user for the particular movie that the user uh, uh, that the user R hasn't seen, you make a weighted sum in which the weights of users <coughs> who uh, like the movie uh, uh, who like the same movies as R will be positive, and the weight given to move to the users who have a different taste, right, who are in opposite direction negative, will be given negative values. So we are leveraging, to answer your question, you were exactly right, we leverage, you see, for example, uh, we play here with this that uh, uh, if, uh, um, if I like romantic comedies, but hate uh, wild movies with lots of violence, uh, right? Then me, uh, then uh, if another user uh, who actually hates romantic comedies but likes movie with violence and he liked that movie, you want to make it less likely that the first user uh, will like it uh, because the tastes are opposite. So you weigh all the rankings uh, of other users. Of course, we, as I mentioned, we pick only those that this absolute value of this is sufficiently large. Why? Just to keep, to keep things tractable because there are millions of users and uh, billions probably of movies. Uh, so we want to do the, um, uh, we, we want to limit the size of this sum just to uh, make the computational task uh, simpler. Um, so this is how you recommend on the basis of similarity of uh, tastes of users. So, Okay.